What's going on? Hope everybody is out there healthy, safe, and uh, trying to get through a, a new normal, but hopefully not a consistent new normal, as we're all hoping things temper down eventually, but everybody making sacrifices out there and being safe, and it's great to see the, uh, for sure, the American public do that. It's uh, the Palaki Zone, and yes, sports is still not back in form, of course, but doesn't mean we can't talk about it. We had Billy Ray Laxton two weeks ago. We had Troy Canaba in a couple of great interviews last week, and uh, kind of going down the line here. And the next person I wanted to talk to who was more directly affected, like Troy was, through this whole COVID-19 thing is uh, Sol Ross head baseball coach, uh, Bobby Mesker. Coach, uh, first off, I asked this for Troy. First and foremost, how are you? How's the family, the wife? Everybody good? Everybody healthy? Oh, yeah. Everybody's healthy and staying inside and and um, spending time with each other, which is good. But everybody's healthy, so that's, that's good. Now, Troy told me that uh, his family, jokingly, was uh, starting to get sick of him, seeing him every day. Has that been the case for you? You know, I don't know. I think uh, maybe mom getting sick of the kids more more than me even. But, um, no, it's been good because we haven't spent a lot of time during the spring together. And, and um, so it's been nice to spend time with each other, actually. Now, like Troy uh, and myself and Billy Ray Laxton and Sol Ross Athletics, most of us are prepping for games, prepping for a season. Uh, you know, baseball got upended because of this. And, uh, I mean, at this point, I should be having graphics made and, and getting stats ready and getting emails and sending emails back and blasting stuff out. And you've got to be thinking about practices and lineups and strategy. And it's just, unfortunately, it, it had to happen, but it's unfortunately taken a back seat to what we're going through right now. How have you adjusted to this? You know, I think all the things you talk about there, that those are all stresses. They're um or stresses that, that we have with our jobs on a day-to-day basis. And um, I don't think, uh, I think the only thing that's changed is, is the stress is a little bit different. But um, this is unprecedented uh, time, um, a lot of unknown. So the stress has uh, become a little bit different than what we were having in the spring. But the, there are still stresses there. So um, so trying to trying to find the best way to um, to uh, uh, keep your mind off of what, what's happening and kind of um, – um, engage in different different things than, than um, we we have been in uh, in the past. So now I want to talk about this baseball team that um, unfortunately finished their season at at six and twelve. Did get a, a final win against Ozarks and a seven three win all the way in Clarksville. Unfortunately, your last uh, trip had to be that long drive back, and for the fans around here, we were getting ready for six games mm-hmm. in a row. Um, what did you take from this this team? And we'll get into Tim Johnson being a senior and go into right. what's going to happen with him and the other players. But uh, a six and twelve team, back to back tournament appearances the last two years before this. Uh, what did you think of the makeup of this team? You're not new coming in. It was going to be a young team. We lost a lot of seniors over the last couple of years. So um, and it's a process to winning, um, and you do that with a lot of older um, older uh, players. So. Um, I knew it was going to be uh, a challenging year, but it's going to be a process. Um, but I like the group of guys that we had, and and um, we talked about the process all the way from the start of the fall, um, and uh, not really having any expectations, just getting out there and getting better every day, and and looking to win a conference championship in a couple of years. But hopefully, uh, we're with this young team, maybe limp into the conference tournament, which I feel like they had a a, a chance to do that, even uh, being as young as they are. But but that's kind of what it was. So the the six and twelve start was about where I had. Uh, uh, I, I had uh, kind of predicted in my head what because of uh, the process that it takes to win. So a lot of things to figure out early, and you got to do that with a young team. So wins and losses, um, you may not get as many wins as, as, as losses to start the year. But we were just now starting to click, I felt like. So. Matt Hagerman called me right when it all went down. Uh, you know, looking for uh, a quote for the paper about how, you know, sports was canceled and my thoughts on that and, you know, things that, like, what were what was going to be missed and, you know, other, other pieces that um, should have came about but didn't because of it. And the big one that I came up with was seeing what Tim Johnson was going to do this year because, I mean, All-American last year doesn't happen around Sol Ross very often. You can attest to that yeah. being around. Um, and the year he was having to start, he was it lo- just looking at, you know, 
the stats and you know mapping out the rest, it looked like he was gonna exceed 2019 by a fair amount. And that was my big thing to Matt was it was unfortunate that we weren't gonna see Tim Johnson's senior year come to fruition. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's the most important thing about the whole thing because he was one of our uh, one of our two seniors and. And uh, to be honest, it didn't even feel like he was having that great of a year. He was um, still had a couple of series where I thought he struggled a little bit. Uh, Tim Johnson struggling is hard to imagine, but because um, he's still probably going to hit 330 when he's struggling. But um, yeah, what kind of year he could have? He was just now. We do really good hitting at home, having those six games like you had mentioned earlier, Derek. That was going to be huge. We knew that coming in after that long trip to Ozark, so we were excited about it. The guys. Um, uh, like hitting at our park, and a guy like Tim Johnson could um, just kind of go off in six games and and uh, be fun to watch for sure. So that is no doubt one of the uh, tragedies of the of the of the year. <laughs> you say it's a down year, but he's only batting four thirty one. <laughs> yeah, let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven two or three hit games combined. <laughs> uh, uh, gee, it's just crazy when you think about it. 15 RBI, he had only 28 or 29 last year, four home runs compared to nine last year. He was going to, if he kept that trajectory going, and he had had, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine hits his last four games. <laughs> oh, excuse me, that was the start. We can go to the other side. He had two, four, six, nine hits his last four games. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what's, what's next for him? You know, uh, I'm talking to Tim a little bit. Um, we were always, we were going to be waiting for the draft. Um, oh, yeah. That was always a, po- always a possibility for that. He's that good of a hitter. I feel like he can hit on any level. Um, uh, just somebody give him that opportunity. But kind of hurt him not finishing out the year because I think um, as we're getting uh, further in the season, I think uh, more scouts were going to come out as the weather got sure. better and, and catch some Division three games. So that kind of hurt him. Um, so uh, we'll still wait for the draft. You never know. He's on. He'll be on the board. Some teams have talked to him, but – um, I have him set up to go out in Michigan and play in a uh, uh, professional developmental type type league, and hopefully he can get something from from that point forward. But but um, he should be playing professional baseball for sure somewhere. So, so his Sol Ross career is over. I think so. I think uh, he's one of those guys that you know he understands that the uh, his age is catching up with him, mm-hmm. and if he wants to try that professional dream. Um, you know, um, there could be a little uh, possibility he could come back if uh, he didn't get drafted, um, but we'd have to wait for the draft for that to happen. But but either way, I think, uh, um, you know, we both talked about it. I would never keep a guy uh, back just for our, our own personal benefit. So we're going to do what's best for Tim. I told him the same thing, do whatever is best for him, and that goes for anybody in that situation. So This, when we look back at it, and it probably already is true, this is going to be one of those where were you when it happened Mm. moments. Mm. I remember it was about a two, three-day span. I was traveling with softball, Troy Canaba and whatnot for that tournament in Arizona. And all of a sudden, they started talking. Is March Madness going to go? And all of a sudden, the Ivy League goes, we're not having our tournament. And then the next day, mm. it was another conference, and then this, and then that, and then an NBA player test positive, and then all of a sudden, mm. it all stopped. And NCAA was like, no March Madness, no tournaments there. We're like, okay, well, what does that mean for us? And then the next day, or the next day, it was mm. the ASC, and everybody, done. What when where what was going on when you got the word and what was your initial reaction? You know, I, and at first I, I couldn't. You know, I've been thinking about this uh, coronavirus since uh, uh, the winter break, seeing what was happening in China and things. And I actually, was telling my wife and my kids like this thing is coming over here. But I could have never predicted um, what it was going to do to to uh, sports, the sports world, and and uh, the United States in, in general. So. Um, it was it was a shock. Everything was happening so fast. But once those dominoes started falling, I think we could all see that we weren't going to be able to stop it. And and um, it did. It just happened so fast. We weren't even able to to prepare. I wish um, I'd have thought more about it and I'd have prepared more. But I don't think anybody is prepared for what happened and how fast it happened. Yeah. So, what was the first thing you told your guys? You know, the unfortunate part about that too is we were off that weekend. And I was on a recruiting That's trip. That's right. So I was on a recruiting trip and trying to text back and forth and letting them know. And they were, they were, we were inter-squatting, and Coach Gallego was running that. But um, so, uh, yeah, I couldn't even get to them face-to-face. And um, they were gone before – most of them were gone before I even got back from that recruiting trip. So um, so we've just talked back and forth through uh, group messaging. And I've had a few end-of-the-year meetings, but there's not a whole lot you can tell them. That's one thing about this is I think everybody has um, is in a profession that – 
you can call on a mentor, you can call on somebody that's been there, done that type of thing. And this is something that nobody, nobody has the answer for. So even some of the older guys that, um, that, um, I call and, uh, and pick their brain about certain situations that may happen. This one here is unprecedented for everybody. So everybody's trying to figure things out. So, um, it's just been, kind of been day by day and, and, uh, trying to figure out a, a, a way through this, but not a whole lot we could tell our guys. Um, but um, but just um, through group messaging and back and forth, and that the season was over, and and um, look forward to seeing them when I do see them, and talking more one on one. So, you know, I'm 28 years old. I didn't play college ball. I was obviously worked it, been around it, played in high school leagues and whatnot. And you know, most of these players aren't that much older than high schoolers at the end of the day. And guess what? I graduated <laughs> high school at 18 years old. These are still young, impressionable kids that are on your team. It's it, it it's not. I'm getting here, but it's probably not as easy for them to wrap their heads around this like you or like me who have you know more years of experience on this earth. What advice can you give them right now to help, yes, these, these young, still impressionable, growing kids to get through this? You know, I think the only thing I can go back to is the only the closest thing to this uh, that I can um, remember is when I was in college, September 11th happened. Um, it was the, the uncertainty that you had, the not knowing where they're going to attack and attack in Midland, Odessa, which is right up the road from here, because that's where President Bush was from. So you had all these type of things. Are your family's going to be all right? Um, and I felt comfortable and, and safe here in Alpine, to be honest, uh, more than any other place, maybe. So so um, sending them back out there into um, a more populated, dense area, um, are they going to be safe and things like that? So all I could tell them is, um, you know, the United States has been through a lot of different things over the course of its uh, its lifetime, and, and um, um, we'll recover from this, and things are going to be okay, and um, and uh, just take care of theirself and spend time with family and, and uh, get the rest they need. I, I wouldn't tell them you need to go out there and hit every day and you need to be in the weight room lifting every day and you need to do the X, Y, Z. That's just probably not the way I, I would do it though, because they're trying to process it too. We're all trying to process it. So um, so some, some thought and some um, 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 some uh, time with family and things like that is probably the best thing for them right now and where we can all kind of process it. So. Take a quick break. We're talking with Silver Ross Head Baseball Coach Bobby Mesker. We'll be back. Second half, we'll talk about the future of Silver Ross Baseball as there's now some time to get a team ready for 2021. We'll be back. Second half with my good friend Bobby Mesker, Silver Ross Head Baseball Coach. Now with uh, a decent amount of time on his hands, not having a season to to coach and to progress players in the normal fashion, there's time now. So, coach, uh, coach, when you ask Coach Canaba, you know, how are you how are you handling this this newfound time, and, and and what's the way to go about it? And you know, Canaba was like, well, we recruit ahead, so most of our class is already ready. There's a couple of people we're still looking to go get is is that the case for most uh athletic programs do you mirror that to where 2021 is almost done you know not for us um just because uh maybe baseball and softball are a little bit different in that sure. uh, in that regard but now we're still trying to fin- uh, fill out the uh the 2021 class so um you know uh, luckily we don't have a whole lot to fill necessarily we got some spots we need to uh, improve at but overall um we only had two seniors so it was one of those years that um we're not needing um uh, fill a whole lot but um we're out there beating the bushes and that's what we're doing right now coach guy and i have, uh, have a list of guys and been calling them and talking to them but not being able to bring them on campus and things makes it tough so um so anyways, that's, that's what we've been doing. That's a part of what we're doing, doing all kinds of different things, but the recruiting is a big part of it. Yeah, it seems like most of the talk I've had with coaches, yourself, Canaba, uh, Coach Novak and whatnot, they always say, I, I got these recruits and they're really interested, but I can't, I, I can't show them where they're going to play. And the weird thing was, it's, it's, a, it's a story, that, it's a loose parallel. Uh, I wanted to go to a college in Massachusetts. This was not to play. This was not to do athletics. Right. It was for you know to to work in in television and radio. And I was dead set on this one in Boston. I went and visited. I loved it. I got ready to go. Found out it was too much money. Wasn't going <laughs> to pay all that. Okay. So my dad goes, "Well, did you apply anywhere else?" I said, "Yes, I applied here in Oswego and I applied here in Plattsburgh." He goes, "Pick one." 
<laughs> for no reason whatsoever. I said, I'll go to Plattsburgh. Had never even seen either campus oh, or man. been to either town. The first time I ever set foot <laughs> on that campus was July of 2010 for orientation. orientation yeah. And four years later, got out of there in four years. But I'm <laughs> sure an athlete is going to want to see yeah. the campus and the facilities and whatnot, right? Right. I, I think that's one of our biggest pitches is um, is uh, playing at Coconut Field. Our facilities yeah. are good. And also uh, the campus is a really nice campus. I want our recruits to come and uh, look at places. Believe it or not, there are guys who commit to places without ever seeing it, whether it be a little small scholarship or something. But um, uh, Alpine's one of those places we want um, people on campus because that's when we have a chance to uh, sell what we have going on, plus uh, the facilities and and uh, the cost affordability of the place just makes it a, an easy sell, we think. But not having them here on campus makes it very difficult. Besides the fact that they can't see it in person, how else has our current situation uh, affected recruiting? You know, I think it's the unknown for everybody. Uh, the junior college guys, they don't know if they're going to go back and take their extra year. Um, they don't know um, uh, things like that. And then also uh, uh, playing games. I mean, one of the b uh, biggest part of the recruiting process is watching guys play or sending video in, and, and those seniors haven't even, they're not going to be able to finish their year, it looks like. So um, that's, that's a big part of it is um, if no games and things are going on, um, it's hard to, um, to recruit and see if guys can play. So um, you got to do your homework a little bit more, dig a little deeper. Um, since there ain't, there is no um, uh, 2020 season happening right now for the junior college guys as well as the high school guys, so so it's uh, affected it tremendously. Coach Cano brought this up because when I spoke to Billy Ray two weeks ago, and the NCAA was coming down with their give the the spring kids their year back, all we talked about was the positive aspects, the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's you know it, it was it was out of their control and definitely right you know to give the seniors their year back, and then we left it at that. Coach Cano brought up the fact that I didn't even think of is everybody gets their year back. So freshmen that should now be mm -hmm. sophomores are back to freshmen, juniors to sophomores, seniors to juniors. It, it, there is a ripple effect that goes all the way down to the bottom that I didn't think of at first. So now you going in to recruit new guys, you have a bunch of freshmen that are still freshmen. So mm -hmm. that makes your recruiting tougher, right, for the numbers that you can bring in based on all that are going to stay. Right, yeah. Um, we're in a different situation because if it was last year, it would have been a lot different. We only had the two seniors. So um, um, and it's not going to affect us as much. But if we had the group we had last year and seniors decided to come back and right. play, that really affects the way you're going to go about it. But um, for us, it hadn't changed a whole lot, but I know exactly what uh, Coach Cannabis is talking about, and, and you kind of create a log jam as well. So um, And Division One and uh, all the way through, whenever you have all these seniors coming back for their, their last year and they already have other commitments, um, that there might be a, the depth chart issue uh, uh, coming into play. But um, you know what I've noticed is more of the seniors are, are, are wanting to move on, I think, and start their life, and then but the younger guys are, are um, excited about having that extra year of uh, playing eligibility. It's the freshmen and sophomores, I think, that, that are going to uh, take advantage of that the most. So. And everybody agrees, I think, across the board that the NCAA got it right mm -hmm. with allowing that extra year, right? I believe. I oh, yeah. That was immediately that was the first thing I thought because um, I promised um, these guys that committed to us four years of playing and, um, and everything that goes along with that, a great playing experience, and, and you kind of feel um, um, shafted if you don't get those four years. So it's the right thing to do. Um, I think only time will tell uh, what it actually affects all the way across the board, but it's the right thing to do, and um, it's all nothing, nothing but positive. Actually, Briar Holt was one of our other seniors, and he's going to come back and finish out his Masters sure. and, and play another year. So we only lose Tim Johnson in that, that respect. But, um, but yeah, it's absolutely the right thing to do, and, and they, they got that thing right for sure. It's easy to talk negatives, and we've talked some positives, and I want to talk more positive. Yeah, you've got more time to recruit and talk to these guys, but obviously there's a, a point where they can't come out and visit, and, you know, there's a, an ebb and flow to everything, so to speak. But what other positives can we find out of this? I can think of one. The, the field's going to look beautiful. <laughs> yeah. No one is on it right now. It seems like it gets greener each day, just water, sunlight, and, and some mowing. And Eli, yeah. no, one mows a, no one mows a ball field like Eli. Right, that's right, that's we right. both know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what, what other positives can, can we take out of this situation? 
Yeah, um, one, I spend a lot more time with family, which is good, yes. uh, all those type of things. But also the ability, some professional development. We've worked on some of that stuff in, in the office and talked with coaches. We're, we're putting um, together our um, different uh, uh, forms for coaching and just different things on the computer that we need um, to, uh, to do our job. But just uh, the office work, getting things organized and time to self-reflect a little bit, which – um, usually you're you're going so fast that it's hard to self-reflect, but self-reflection time is is good. So there's some of that going on too, and just um, every way that we can get better as a program to um, uh, win a conference championship. So so there's uh, there's no doubt um, positive coming out of the thing, um, but you got to be able to do it right, and you got to kind of uh, plan your week out. And and uh, Coach Gagel and I have both done that, and we're working on the field and doing things like that. So it's uh, ready when we can have people on campus. Uh, recruits on campus that it looks in its uh, best yeah. shape maybe ever so so um so we got a, we got our weeks uh, mapped out and we're trying to um, stay as productive as possible but um um so i think the positives will, will um, outweigh the negatives over long term hopefully you speak of self-reflection and at the end of the day you coach all coaches anybody that works in athletics we we'll go to kathy moreno and what mm -hmm. she does but you know at, behind the desk all the paperwork and stuff that we don't handle <laughs> right. that sh that she does that we probably don't want to handle anyway because she knows what she's doing <laughs> yeah, right. but we're all we're all doing seven thousand different things at once yeah. self-reflection it is it is it's different because you know i've worked in athletics ever since i've been here in alpine since 2014 on and off and then radio yeah. station covering everything Sol ross doing all that it is nice, though, for if only for a second to be able to take that breath, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, it is. I think it's good for the mind. It's good for the soul. So uh, um, um, you just got to do it the the right way and make sure you're still staying productive. But um, and it's a really uh, thought out, uh, self reflection um, type deal. And it's something I pride myself in. I think as a leader, a lot of times, if we're in a leadership role, we get very few. Um, times where we are we are evaluated i think players are evaluated every day mm -hmm. um, and uh, just like ever since they were little uh little as you're little you're being evaluated by parents and summer coaches and baseball coaches and getting to college is evaluation all the time problem with that um i don't think that we learn how to self-reflect and i think that takes wisdom that takes time but um i've only been doing that probably the last three to four years where i'm really self-reflecting on what what um, um, on what kind of job I'm doing, but um, it's also something that I've talked to the players about that during this time that they take some self-reflection time. So whenever this thing uh, bulls over, when it's all said and done, that um, they're better for it. So self-reflection is important, I think. So. In our last few minutes here, I want to ask you something I asked Troy last week. He's a father of three. His kids are a little older than yours. Mm -hmm. I've known his kids for quite a while, and they're th three of the three of the best kids I know. Your kids are, uh, your two boys and your girl are a little younger, right. yeah. uh, a little more susceptible, so to speak. Um, when this all happened, I asked to Troy, what, I'm sure you sat down your kids and explained what was going on. As a parent, take away the coach out of this for a minute, but just as a parent right now, with young athletes, because they're all going to be athletes. I know two of them are, and right, yeah, I'm probably. sure they'll all be, knowing the Mesker household. <laughs> what did you tell them? You know, I think uh, the ten-year-old is—he um, uh, and I have a really good relationship. He's the oldest one, so uh, I've been talking to him since uh, the winter break about the coronavirus and this thing's coming. So we've had some uh, thinking about it, talking about it, and um, staying germ-free and washing hands, doing mm -hmm. all these type of things, just protection. And then the seven-year-old's always right there listening. Um, <laughs> so he's always asking me uh, certain questions, but um, I think they know that uh, mom and dad love them and we're there for them, and and uh, they feel safe in our house and things like that. So. Well, they're fortunate enough to have parents at home that that um, where they have a safe environment. It's not always said with everybody, but um, but um, I think they're going to be they're going to be okay. It's not a whole lot uh, to say, but I think they feel safe with uh, with um, parents at home with them. Yeah. Now they had sports coming up too. Yeah. That they're I'm sure they're devastated. <laughs> they are. I think the little four year old is going to play t ball for the first time, oh. and she's uh, I think she's more devastated than the boys to be really? honest. Yeah, she really is. <laughs> she was looking forward to this, but um, we've been outside playing and tossing her the ball and i think she's got a chance to be better than the boys were so uh so we're uh we're out there every day uh playing a little baseball in the yard so we're getting our baseball in so that's great yeah um quickly now i asked this to troy last week I, you know i said what advice do you give the uh the students but also the parents that you know like you she's about to do t-ball and what if she goes and plays college softball someday down the line the whole time you're going to be 
watching her progress and being a fan and watching her play sports mm -hmm. like your other kids. What do you say to all the parents of student athletes out there that all of a sudden it's not there? You know, I think um, there's a lot of support at home from their parents. I think, uh, you know, probably one of the best advice that I got from um, uh, somebody that had already raised kids and was listen. You know, I think that we too many times as leaders and as parents, we do a lot of the talking, and, and um, that's probably the best advice I got. Just listen to them. They'll tell you how they're feeling, and, and um, we don't always have to be so quick to answer. Sometimes just to sit there and listen to them talk to us is probably the best thing. But, um, but um, yeah, I think that's probably the best advice I, could, I, I was given um, um, when listening, not always telling uh, your kids things, but just listen. Yeah. There you go. Where does a half hour go? <laughs> it seems like it just like that Where? sometimes. <laughs> Bobby Mesker, my good friend, so Ross said baseball coach. Thank you for uh, coming on in to uh, give the fans and the listeners out there a perspective of uh, what's going on right now in athletics. I appreciate it, Derek. Always a pleasure. I know there will be better times ahead, Always. and we'll talk about sports live again. Right. Can't wait. We'll see you next Monday. Thanks again, Bobby. Again, everybody, be safe, be smart, be respectful. We're all going through this together, and we're all going to get through it together. I'll see you next Monday right here on the Vloggy Zone.